Creative Community Live art demos. We are here at Up the Artworks, surrounded by beautiful art by Artbeat alumni. So for those that don't know, we are part of Artbeat Studio, which is a nonprofit that believes in using art as a tool to work on our mental health. So we offer a six month residency and our alumni can sell their work here afterwards. Um, we also have Studio Central across the hall where you can come in person to make art. And for those that can't make it in person at this time, we have this video for you. So I'm Ollie. I always forget to introduce myself every week, but I'm, I'll be behind the camera making comments. Um, but Kate will be the one guiding us as per usual. So before we get started, we're gonna show off one of our artists and their bio. So this is one of our newer artists as well, like we've been going through the last few weeks. So we're gonna read the bio for Elizabeth and I will flip the camera around and show some of her art at the same time. Elizabeth Furstuf was born in Winnipeg in 1985 to an artistic family. At age 12, she was making crafts and putting realistic portraits in pencil and graphite into, into her sketchbooks. Then, in her late 20s, she became painting with acrylics. She became interested in artists of the 1800s, but her penchant for realism mixed with whimsy focused her on the serial of Salvador Dali or Picasso and Alcott. Elizabeth Ford's failures often ending up with something unexpected. She favors abstraction, but her animals are representation. Her angry goose, a collage of geometric shapes on a hand stencil background of maple leaves and dollar signs, expresses anger at the cost of food. She has carved a small wood version of the angry goose. But she has painted a very different chamfer goose with gooselings in her favorite color palette to portray turkey. A fridge magnet features a cat in colors reminiscent of the floors. Her surreal eyes expresses anxiety about being watched and analyzed. Her one foot tall mannequin sculpture, deconstructed, reconstructed, and ringed with planetary symbols implies that though we are cosmic dust, we construct our own identities. Art is a healing, expressive activity that comes from deep in my soul. I'd like to make it my career, says Elizabeth. And because I'm good at making imagines, I've learned so much at Artbeat, where the high expectations I set for myself have been reinforced in a safe space. Photo by drawing a picture inspired by my programming. Yes. So we have another artist here from the same group who is one of our recent alumni graduates. So this is Tiffany. Hi. And you can see some of their work over on the wall there. I think we've shown off your to the petals yeah. and the going yeah. um, right there. I think we've seen some of it in a past live, but we have the Beautiful artists themselves. <laughs> why we couldn't showcase it last time uh -huh. and you brought it here. Okay, I'm gonna mute this one. <laughs> I'm getting better at putting it on the tripod. As you see, there was lots of preparation for Easter. So we're going with Easter baskets, very simple basket. We were not focusing on baskets at all. We're focusing on the flowers and what's in the basket if you want to really focus on the basket it's your <laughs> your personal thing yes. uh, and i have different variations of very little detail baskets that are not um really um, detailed flowers not too much and they were actually not the flowers that were on the mm -hmm. uh, photograph completely not and I can just show variants of what I have, which is not exactly to was there because my goal was not to exactly portray what yeah. was there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my goal was to just basically create uh, something that can be painted fast. And yes. I have two different variants. This is completely avoiding detail. This is with some detail, but not, not there yet. 
Uh, and I do have something I started, but it's not finished yet, but it can be a guideline oh, for some so ideas. Okay. We're manifesting spring here. I know it's <laughs> cold outside, but we're thinking flowers, we're thinking warmth, we're thinking sun. It's officially spring. It's spring yes. now. And while Manitoba doesn't understand that, we do. <laughs> and it says it, it will be snowing by on Tuesday, oh, no. I, but I hope it just avoids us. I hope it uh, and I have this one. So I'm actually going to paint from a photograph and it's up to you what you're going to choose because yes. uh, Oli is taking care of the camera and yes. wants something requiring less attention and yeah. it's Tiffany's first time. Yeah. So yeah. it's up to you. Do whatever you want to do. I have paper. I have also watercolor paper I have right in my uh, box. And this is canvas. So it's up to you what you want to choose. I'll just use some paper. Paper. I'll get paper, I guess. Paper works fine. Yeah. I'm gonna run away right after this to do the workshop in uh, at Studio Central in person. So I'm not gonna have as much time to give us my attention to so this. So this is for the ideas. I even brought two sticks if someone wants to go crazy with some <laughs> some little uh, dots. But um, okay, cool. I'm just a uh, painting. From my experience, I just want to relax before I paint and not to think about I need to do it exactly as someone else did it. I don't want to go by that. Um, I brought a combination of uh, paints. I like acrylic paints. Not all of them are available, the colors that I need here. So I brought this one. They have a little bit more. Um, baby wipes. Uh, okay, I got these ones. And I'm happy about cleaning my brush before layers because it gives me a oh. nicer, nicer color. I did not choose to paint the background right away. Mm -hmm. After that, as you see, I did not paint the background there as well. I yeah. did not visualize it. It can stay just like that. So I'll see what I want to do afterwards. And again, my goal is not... Uh, um, it's not something that I would see as a very detailed work, so I'm not planning that. And I'm hoping to avoid as much detail as Which Kate says, but we all know <laughs> after seeing happens, Kate's work, it's beautifully detailed and realistic. I'm but trying we're gonna to pretend <laughs> it's not that good because Kate says it isn't. <laughs> a little piece of something on my paper. Yeah, so oh, I cool usually start. start with the basket by itself. So for the basket, my choice would be warm white from Dollar Tree. I have the uh, yellow offer and uh, I have brown, which I can just get burnt umber. And I can have some white as well. So that would be the cord that I need for this purpose. Um, and I can start with just mixing, or I could just mix it directly on a canvas, but I think it's good to pre-mix so I don't have to do it each time I make a brush stroke. I'm just copy whatever Kate's doing, spill the paints I'm just happy. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm just passing paints and yeah, so we have brown. We can choose any random mm -hmm. color for the basket too. Doesn't have to be that specific. Yeah. Okay, for mixing, I do not choose this brush. This is a little bit more, mm -hmm. a little thin. So I would just go with half of this pile and half of this pile. So I'm leaving some of it. Oh, it's very close. And then add white mm -hmm. and see how that works. Okay. And I do not usually aim for the same exact shape because that would be a little bit too much time of thinking. Mm -hmm. I just mix without thinking usually. So I just grab whatever color I can get. And then I have the black as well. And black would be used for the in-betweens, but uh, I would use it just the way it is and then uh, I'm not mixing anything even though I could mix it but I'm not going to again it's time so
so uh, I can just mark where the basket is and the hardest sometimes is to locate it where where it is located I'm sorry my cat went somewhere close to my stuff I got some of my cat it's a cat's hair yeah <laughs> So I'm just willing to place the basket where it is. I just clean this brush, put it in water, and let it be there till the end of the day. <laughs> when I come back home, I just wash my brushes better. Okay, so um, that's the basic shape. Yes, I know sometimes it's hard to talk while creating art, but what I know best. <laughs> but if you have any questions or anything, you'll feel free to comment. Yes, and Oli is doing several things at once. Oli is watching if someone comments to answer. So yes, you can do that. Oh, it's kind of frightening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supervising. I'm not scared at all. Oh, I'm very scared. Big bite. Don't you, don't you know I'm a mortgage studio central security? <laughs> <laughs> I, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. So I will take the darker shade just for the um, outline. And I want to see how many I have. Actually, I have three. So this basket is comparably simple to figure uh, where things go. And I usually curve the part that is curved and don't curve the part that is not curved. I mean, I know, yeah, it sounds as simple as it is. You make it look easy. <laughs> I'm still getting my background. Uh, white paper scares me. I thought if I start thinking about the background, it would take quite a lot of time. And we don't have, our time is quite yeah, yeah, limited. limited. Yeah, so I'm just doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, so that's... So I'll just start... So we have this darker shade underneath the flower. So I will just make it random. It can be brown or I could just take a little tiny bit of black and make gray, which works as well. Let me just show how it looks like. So I do not need much of black. I just mix the gray that is lighter than this. Just mix it in with browns. So simple solutions. I do not go for very hard thinking to what each of them should look like. And then I just mix it straight on the paper paper and mix it with Everybody have. So if you put colors randomly, it looks better. But again, yes, if you have time to think and you have want to actually think about that. Thinking is always a choice. It's a choice, <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's not always my choice. <laughs> Well, I'd like to say, I don't think for fun. <laughs> okay, I'm just doing what I'm doing. I get to lighter shades where on the basket it's lighter already, mm -hmm. so I don't have to. Yeah. 
close enough. So if, for someone who has a hard time of figuring things out, we can always put the outline and then remove it, or we could just blend it enough. Or we could just leave it bright the way it is. This is very reminiscent of the live we did where we painted the apple pie. Oh, yes, with the last. Yes. So, yeah, the weaving. Um, so if, if we did that, we have the experience. <laughs> Yeah, so instead of doing all this and looking where everything is located, we could just randomly <laughs> do, do things, but it's just that I want to see where everything is. Yeah, I'm going a bit more off script with mine and just making it up as I go. It's a little less realistic, but um, it's also very simple. Uh, you know what the different ways? I also like to mix in some random colors with mine, so I think it's really fun to do that too. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really nice. Yeah. It's new for you. Mm -hmm. I think it's new for me, I'm like, that doesn't sound nice. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme. It doesn't rhyme. <laughs> no. I need to get better at preparing things to talk about. I'm also practicing my uh, camera voice, so hopefully the camera is actually picking up my voice, because sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see later. <laughs> Don't let me guess. Don't let me guess. The thing I love about a color paint is that you can always paint over it because it dries so quickly. Of course, I'm never patient enough for it to dry anyways, so I end up just like muddling it up, but theoretically, it does happen. So when we have the ability to actually make fine lines, um, it's great to do that because sometimes it paint on standing, like, when you facilitate yeah. and you don't have this ability so all the lines are really all over the place yeah that reminds me of one <laughs> workshop i did we painted buildings and because i was standing beside the canvas instead of in front of it <laughs> i um did the whole thing slanted <laughs> but it's okay because it was you know everyone else's painting like i was there to guide not to yeah be the painter <laughs> okay i'd better start painting the flowers because I feel like if I don't start right away, I'm not making it, so okay. I need to put the basket inside okay. for a little bit. We are only like 15 minutes in. <laughs> okay, but I know how much time flowers can take, so okay, let me hurry up. <laughs> okay, so I have this purple, or I just say purple, okay, egg, Easter egg right here. 
And I have the blue one. Easter's coming up. So next Friday will be closed for Good Friday. Yes, which is uh, um, Good Friday, then uh, Saturday, and then Sunday it's my son's birthday, which Ooh. falls on Easter, and he's turning 18. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's even so that is Easter. exciting. Okay. He is a very good one. Yeah. But when you realize when you turn 18, not a whole lot changes. No, you just get a number. Yeah. But I feel like 18 is one of those last ones where, where like, you kind of stop counting your age. Yeah. It's like, I'm 18. I don't have to count anymore. Yeah, I don't really see In a good way, though, too. Yeah. When you're younger, like, age differences are a bigger deal because they're more substantial in terms of what stage you are in life. Yes. But it's nice being able to, like, I'm not restricted as much to mm -hmm. who I'm hanging out with. Here. <laughs> Anyone have any Easter traditions? Uh, not really. I used to think it's when my kids were young, but they're mostly grown now. Mm. Yeah. 18 and 12, they don't really like painting eggs anymore. Yeah. Well, we paint eggs, but uh, we do the Ukrainian ones. Oh, well, we put the wax. Yeah. The sen so. Senka? Yeah, I don't know much about it, honestly, even though I've been doing it for so long. Um, but then it's not super, I think technically there's Ukrainian, but like we're not super Ukrainian. Oh, okay. Um, but for some reason, he started doing that. Um, we're not as good as those people that are like really good, but it's very interesting in the painting process that requires a lot of patience. It would. Um, yeah, I can. I, if you look at my first day, I don't even know where we started when I was like maybe 12, 12 like young. It's just like a little green egg with like a little scratchy deer on it. It's like oh, square. It's so cute. And yeah. Even now it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. You can kind of because the way you do it, right, is you put the wax on to con to conserve the color, and then you have to do it from light to dark. Yes. Yeah, just like watercolor. Yeah, which is weird because normally you like to, you know, do outlines with dark colors and stuff. Yeah, but you have to wait till the end. Yeah, that, right. So you have to layer. fill in a lot and then like leave the outline if you want a black outline or anything like that. Yeah. And we also, um, my, this is a my family thing. We always forget the right order to do the colors in. <laughs> so we're like, is it orange next or is it blue? <laughs> which one's lighter? Some colors will go others better. That's true. It's obvious that yellow is the brightest, but then like green versus like blue and orange. Do you then use natural dyes? Um, I actually don't know. We I don't know how long we've had them, but my grandma basically has these dyes that she freezes in between. Oh wow. Um, in between the years. The seasons, yeah. So. We've been using like the same dyes, and everyone like I think a few years ago she bought some some dyes that are specifically for these eggs and kind of replenish them a little bit. Oh, okay, but that's you know, neat. probably so can see like the intention of these. Yeah, yeah but that's really interesting. That's very cool. Yeah, I wish we could do it in the studio, but it's a little bit of a long process and yeah. a little bit of a delicate process and messy and can go wrong in many ways. There's also mm -hmm. fire involved. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's right there. Oh, a white. Sure, white. Sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's okay.
Okay, I need to make it a bit faster for myself. Okay, I'm not focusing on the color. Oh, I just don't want. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I want this. Center somewhere here. some kind of underpainting on mine I find the colors especially like I said I like to use like non accurate traditional colors yeah, yeah. so like it easily kind of adds that sort of mm -hmm. the question is what colors do we do flowers <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have to make them like pop out yeah I have a tendency to leave the background to last for these lives specifically um, because I don't come in with a plan. It's always a challenge to try to put the background in around. <laughs> Pink mixed with white. Pink. Thank you. Pink. I have white. I don't have white on my. <laughs> there. bring all my flower knowledge to think of what to what to paint in here. Um, one thing I did when I was younger that um, I think helps with my some knowledge on art things now is mm -hmm. like I had a book where I, like I drew a bunch of different kinds of flowers and then a couple things like that. Yeah. The flowers especially like my drawing. I drew that once. What kind is it? <laughs> <laughs> What's everyone's favorite flower? Rose, but it's my middle name, so I'm biased. That's understandable. That's <laughs> me with, like, what's your favorite stone? Jade. My middle name is Jade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, kind of understandable. Also, coincidentally, my grandparents stayed in China for a while oh, when I was younger, neat. so I also have a lot of Jade that's stuff neat. from my grandparents. So, of course it's Jade. That's a lovely memory. Um, I like lilies. Lilies are lovely. Um, and tulips. I love the tulip bulbs the way they pop up in the spring. Mm -hmm. And daffodils are one of my favorites. The daffodils are nice. There's no bad flowers, but. Now maybe that one that blooms once a year and smells like death. Yeah, I can, I I can understand that. I don't um, think I'd want that one in my house. No. Yeah, I think I have a lot of biases towards things like from my childhood and stuff. Mm -hmm. Where it's like I had a lily as a kid and we had tulips in our garden. 
So, so you like the things that happen. It's always nice to have those memories, though. Yeah, I'm also very much one to follow habits and traditions. Okay. So a lot of things from when I was a kid, it was like I did it so often that they're like ingrained in my brain. Yes, that makes sense. So it's just habit. But then for some reason you expect if you let go of some of those habits when you're older, you're like, why can't I read a bedtime story? <laughs> and there's really no reason why you can't. Exactly. It's just I mean I don't really want to anymore necessarily, but That's one thing I've learned with my kids is that there's really no specific rules. The rules are what you make them. Exactly. If your tradition is to stay up till midnight on Friday night eating popcorn and movies, that's fine. Yeah. You know, as long as it doesn't interfere with other things. Exactly. It's all about balance. I appreciated my childhood. I had a lot of freedom, mm -hmm. which I like to regulate myself instead of having like someone yeah. overlook me. <laughs> my brain constantly just like repeats in my head <laughs> um, from the wonderful Hannah Montana. <laughs> Life's what you make it, so let's make it rock. And that's. I just think it's so funny because like it does align with like existentialist philosophy, but also it's Hannah Montana. <laughs> yeah. It's like how is Hannah Montana and existential? That, like anytime anytime I think about that, it just I can't escape it. I don't know where it suddenly started happening. I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't know these things. Sometimes Hannah Montana emerges from the depth of depths of your brain. Even though you never listen to her. I don't watch it either. Like, none of my kids watch it either. So. I actually, oddly enough, I didn't, wasn't really into Hannah Montana, but for my birthday, someone who didn't know me very well, like a distant relative, like, got me a Hannah Montana Miley Cyrus CD. Oh, that's funny. And since that was the only CD I owned, when I found, like, the walk of room kind of, like, CD player yeah. that my family had, I was so excited by it, but that was the only CD I had. <laughs> so, I guess I had to listen to it. I didn't yeah. particularly like it. I but it was the choice. It was the only option. <laughs> and I think my favorite song on it was probably The Climb? Is that the one with the... I don't remember. That's the only one I remember. So I'm you're right. talking about something I have no idea about. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're not up to date on your Hannah Montana Well, I know who facts. Hannah Montana is. I don't know any of the details either because I never watched it. I mean, but it was Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Maybe I don't know. I just know it's Miley Cyrus. It Miley Cyrus. I never watched. Is it like one of the bottles has Montana these days? It's a lot of complications with that situation, I think. Oh, probably. Childhood stars. Never, it never turns out the way it's supposed to. Yeah. And that was really sad. Which, like, I get annoyed when they, like, cast adults as teenagers, but also I kind of get it in a way. Like, it's kind of nicer to not be having, like, if I was a teenager on screen, I would regret it forever. Yeah, there's, there's some choices you can't unmake. Being a star is one of them. If my teenage years were recorded. Ah, uh, oh man. That would have been just like insane. Yeah. I'm very much one to not regret things I've done, but at the same time, I'm like, I was figuring myself out. So, it doesn't need to be. Important in this day. I would much rather my teenage years just disappear out of this Which they're going to. I wasn't on camera. I have photos, but luckily. <laughs>
Whatever I do, <laughs> it's too abstract. <laughs> Kate says that she does a hyper a hyper realistic <laughs> rose. <laughs> I like to say my work is impressionistic inspired. Um, impressionist inspired. But I like but like semi realistic, but like with very smudgy lines. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan of that. Blurry colors. I was saying earlier that I don't like doing super realistic and I also don't like doing super abstract. So it's like that in between where it's like, I guess seeming a little mysterious, not mysterious, like inaccurate, yeah. not exact. I'm just painting one rose. Oh, well, you know what? I'm just switching to speed painting, I guess. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, speed painting. There we go. One, two. Why it's so I can just show. Okay. Where I pick up the speed, it's not that I do it good, but I can just try. Do you have any thoughts about your process that you think would be helpful? Uh, you know, I'm not really good with words here. Mm -hmm. um, I can just say it's a lot of that is just avoiding. Um, there is a certain order in which everyone works. Comparisons. Mm -hmm. Comparison is wrong. When you start thinking this person said it works better. Uh, and you are not on the same, you know, on the same thinking um, vibe, let's say. You just, I understand that um, hyperrealism as well is achievable, but I never go for that. Mm -hmm. I think it just is not necessary, not necessary for me, yeah. as I never had enough patience. And you know, uh, patience is, I can be patient for something, but painting, I didn't paint for a long time like some other artists do, mm -hmm. like, you know, stay in their room and draw and paint. Uh, if I have a choice, I don't do that for relaxation, because painting for relaxation is limited. Mm -hmm. For myself, I cannot imagine myself sitting somewhere for two hours and say it was very relaxing because for me it would be a bit too much mm -hmm. i think for a lot of people like the things they are good at are just the things that they enjoy doing so they don't feel it doesn't feel like effort when you put the time into it so like trying to force yourself to do realism when you don't enjoy it no. it might not be that you're not like you can't be skilled at it it's just maybe that shouldn't be your priority if you're not enjoying it depending on what your goals are yeah. yeah and i just don't feel it as something necessary obligatory or you know it's just mm -hmm. something i was never doing like mine is always on the relaxed side mm -hmm. Because while I paint, I try to relax as much as I can. And I don't like thinking about it as a, about a challenge or mm -hmm. you know, I want to. I can improve like a little something, but I don't want to even think about that. Because when I start thinking, I don't want to get upset and just drop painting something. Yeah. Painting, you and know? you like enjoy the process. You enjoy yeah. the process instead of thinking about exactly what the end result is going to be. 
So I would use different greens, and I have green right here. I just want to show as much as I can on, excuse my little claw hand that comes okay. in and steals paint. Which one? What? I'm just trying to guess. <laughs> I was letting the people appreciate my little claw hand. <laughs> From off screen. Mm -hmm. So, leaves, I would. Where is my green? Okay, here it is. I don't know why I didn't bring the right green with me because I would use hunter green for this one and this is Christmas green but yeah, that's okay. it's still I usually mix hunter green with others but I can also use the Christmas green here. It works. Christmas green for Easter basket. <laughs> it's only three months off. Yeah. I'm dealing with the consequences of my own action and have to paint in the background now. <laughs> I sit here with my background then. I almost never do the background first. But white paper scares me. I love these background I don't always do it because I don't yeah. think to. But I do find it. I like how my paintings turn out. Yeah, so I have the whole day to paint this flower. I'm trying to get as much as I can, but I also want to show just sim simply of what can be done. So I'll show the yellows and uh, we can wrap the live and all the rest is in detail. Because yeah, I just show the way I start and then, you know, everyone's thinking goes their own direction. After. Sometimes the hardest part is just starting and kind of having someone that helps. And then once you get into it, you know, into it. That's what I find. Yeah. And then, yes, the results. If everyone's happy, you see photographs. If, <laughs> if all of you are not all happy, you might not see might them. Not see them. <laughs> if I forget to post a photo, I might forget to post it. I do that a lot. <laughs> it's because it's always at the end of the day Friday. And um, Fridays are my busy days. My busy but slow days at the same time. Okay, don't look at my thing. It was a mistake. Okay. I did not mean to put the internet. Go look at my new time. It was a mistake. I'll scold people for um, talking down on their art, and then I'll talk down on my own art. But the difference is, I swear there is one. I say it with love because I know I'm an amazing painter. <laughs> I'm just not one of my best, you know? <laughs> not everything has to be your best. No, not everything is going to be your best. Also, sometimes it's fun to fail if you're comfortable with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I like using acrylic paint. I know I'm not very good with it, <laughs> so I don't have to be super picky with myself. Yeah, it's like less pressure when you're like a light yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so why it's fun to bowl? Oh, I love bowling. I'm so bad at it. I'm terrible. I really thought, like, after going a few times, I'd get better. I did a ten pin bowling a few times. Oh, jeez, that's hard. And then I went five pin bowling. I was like, this is going to be easy in comparison. But then I threw the ball too hard with no accuracy. 
How far did it go? Um, it would, you know what it would do? I would send it and it would make it all the way to the end, then cut off right before it hit all the pins. So I'd just get zero, but like at the very last second. I guess I missed all the detail. I was so focusing on the flower. What's going on? Yeah. I don't get what uh, I'm hearing. Something. Yeah, this isn't. This isn't a painting con conversation. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I also am. A, I'm a personal believer in sarcastic, like arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> Where like I used to be, you know, a lot of people are like kind of semi-sarcastic, semi-real, like, talk down on themselves. Oh, Just the deprecating yeah, comments. Yeah, self-deprecating mm -hmm. comments. Yeah. That's what it's called as, like, humor. And I'm like, I like doing the opposite, because I find, like, it's still kind of self-deprecating, but, like, it's also positive at the same time. So, you can be very careful with self-deprecating comments. Yeah. If you're not careful, you can actually start to believe it. Yeah, and a lot of the time, but... Yeah. I stopped with the self-deprecating about six months ago and I've had this big improvement in my self-esteem. Yeah, I agree. I the thing is that used to be so much of my humor a yeah. lot of the time. It's hard to break away but from now, it. But now like when I hear people with that humor, I'm kinda of like, oh that was so bad for my mental health at the time. Yeah. But I kind of like iffy about I mean I don't it doesn't bother me too much when other people do it, but I'm also I don't say that for myself. Yeah, I say don't say that to my friends. That's, that's what I yeah. say. That's I have a few friends who have that happen. Again, I do, personally, I like sarcastic, like, arrogance, where it's mm -hmm. like, it's still a little self-deprecating, <laughs> but also, like, the opposite at the same time. Yeah, there's a bit of ego in it. Yeah, so it, like, doesn't affect how I see myself as much, but also, mm -hmm. like, I get to make fun of myself still. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah. I've also found that people that kind of have that sense of humor do a good job at putting other people at ease. Because they're like, they're the butt of the joke, but they're not insecure about it. And, yeah, the they're, they're trying to bring themselves down to a similar... Yeah, like, not bring themselves down, but like, kind of put themselves on a similar yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird, because it's like still self-deprecating, Yeah, like it's very strange. But it also is not. I feel like it becomes like scream of consciousness. Yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't I'm, know how would I call mine because it's not a scream, it's just like appearing and then it's it like just goes and comes yeah. and goes. Yeah, it just. I have been trying to support talking more, which may be good or bad depending on what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not the most uh, presenting kind of person. Um, I'm actually hated any form of recording or video of myself for a very long time. I so still don't do video calls. It's not my most comfortable thing. Like, I don't mind no. it too much anymore. Obviously, I do it and I have no problem. But I do also recognize it's not my strong suit. <laughs> It's good that you go into other big companies. Yeah. That's healthy. Yeah. Very healthy work outside your company. I don't gain as much from this live as everyone else does. Probably that's more. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it's also nice to have other people around in your life because when you're in your life by yourself, 
Oh yeah. yeah, that would be really, really hard. It's always, okay. it's always mm -hmm. a little awkward. Like you're talking to yourself, talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I extra have to watch my voice from turning into background noise. Should I actually be doing something different? I'm trying to get the right shape, but I'm not getting it. Okay. I'm just going to leave it for now. Never come back. <laughs> okay, just moving it. <laughs> Mix the little black with the Christmas blue. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do too uh, here. Exact same thing. Maybe not exactly. Similar. I have a tendency when I paint oh. to just use one brush the entire time and also barely clean it <laughs> <laughs> until I just can't anymore because it's gone too far. Something I could do for now and add green. excited when we do like art for this and stuff and then like I will show it to everyone it's like I feel like a toddler at some time like look what I made look what I made <laughs> it's like oh, and then also look what Kate made yes. uh, I'm just working slowly and then I don't yeah. get the working slowly it is it's just like photorealistic yeah. from the reference. Yeah, from side, yes, but when you look at it closer, it's mm -hmm. not it's not done. <laughs> but see? it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that, that was an old And oh. that's my roast. <laughs> <laughs> it's swoopy. It's stylized. <laughs> yes, it's very stylized. <laughs> I guess we're coming to the end. We're on our last kind of five minutes ish. Yeah, you'll see what I come to through the whole so, day. And this is looking beautiful. Do you mind passing those over so I can show it to the camera the right way? It's still a little wet, so just be careful. Oh, I love the colors you chose for the flowers. Okay. Are they all real flowers? I just made them up out of my Okay, because they do look real, because I like the, like, you did the different forms of, like, the ones with the, like, a bunch of little flowers, and then, like, it's the bigger ones. It's a special ones. talent to actually have no reference in Yeah, yeah it's true. true. I have no ability so. to picture things in my head. So when I don't have a reference, I struggle sometimes. 
This is where mine's at. I'm actually pretty happy with it. Oh. The flowers look a little too looks, sad I and small it. in comparison to the rest, but oh, we'll put more yeah. in. That's amazing. Yeah. I love your basket. Beautiful. And then, of course, Kate's, which we've been watching this whole time. He's is amazing. amazing. Thank you. <laughs> got a very special palette. And if you come here in person, you will know that Kate will not put this paintbrush down for the next three hours. I take breaks. <laughs> she does I take breaks. breaks. Yeah, she does take breaks. <laughs> Everyone should take a break when you need one. Yeah. Sometimes you have to tear yourself away from your piece, but it's important. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you in two weeks. Yes. Because uh, I do not have a plan yet. Okay. We'll, find. Find out. we'll find out. So we'll see everyone in two weeks, not next week. Bye.